infinite worlds in video games are impossible. So here's how you do it. If you think of infinity as a really, 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 really big number, well, then you're wrong. Much like the wait for the next Game of Thrones novel, infinity, by definition, never ends. Which has some rather problematic implications for creating infinite worlds in video games because computer memory does end. Especially with my budget. No matter how optimised your game is, you would still need an infinite amount of storage, or it wouldn't be truly infinite. Infinite storage, in this economy, Oh, right. So how do we handle infinite worlds, or even just really big worlds, in video games? We cheat, of course. We lie, we bamboozle, we pull the wool over the eyes of the player with trickery and deviousness. <laughs> Full disclosure, I don't actually release video games, I'm not one of these devious bastards. So let's look at how we fake infinity in video games. Step 1. Mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. We're going to start easy. For our first trick, all we do is create a room and put a mirror at either side. That's it. The mirror on one wall reflects what the mirror on the other wall sees, but what the mirror on the other wall sees is the first mirror reflecting what that mirror sees, and what that mirror sees is the first mirror reflecting the other mirror reflecting the first mirror reflecting... You get the idea. One problem with this is that, along with the opposite mirror, another thing that the mirror reflects is the player. In the real world, we could use a trick where we have two identical rooms separated by a one-way mirror. The player stands in one room and can see through the one-way mirror, but the other room's mirrors only see each other. Which, by the way, if you've ever seen one of these videos recommended to you on YouTube, this is how it's done. Sorry for the spoilers. But this isn't the real world. This is game development, where anything, anything can, can happen. happen. such as hiding the player from the mirrors. Alright, this is cool and all, but how often are you going to want to create an infinity that you can only look at? We want to touch infinity, to taste it, to slide in set teleporting. teleporting. If you're careful about how you construct the world, you can fake infinity with the simple act of teleporting the player from one end of the world to the other. The world segments need to be seamless so that the teleportation isn't noticeable, and you need to design things to hide the lie. For this example, I created a spiral staircase with a big f*** off column down the middle. The stairs and column prevent the player from seeing too far, and the seamless teleportation makes it seem as if the stairs go on forever. But what if you want the player to see the infinite staircase above and below them? What if you want to crush their souls with the side of an unyielding climb that shows no sign of... uh... yielding? In that case, you can just smash this technique together with the previous one. Let's get rid of that big f*** off column and put some mirrors at either end of the tower. Count these steps with your Apple Watch fast. But again, this has a very limited scope. You could use this for like a section of game that you need to last for an indeterminate amount of time, but we want an infinite world, not a repetitive world. So we need a way of faking it that produces variation in the way things look. Which brings us to Wallace, Wallace and Gromiting! Gromiting. This technique involves putting the world down in front of a player as they move. Side note, for this method to work in an open world game, you would need some kind of procedural generation so the world wouldn't be too repetitive. But I'm not talking about that here, cause, like, well, it's hard to do. In this method, we break the world up into small pieces, and we only show those pieces when the player gets close enough to the world. This seems like a perfect solution, right? WRONG! Let me tell you about the strange world of floating point precision. Game engines like Unity and Godot use floats to represent positions in the world. A float can store up to seven digits of information, which sounds like a lot, until you start factoring in decimal places. The number of digits is fixed regardless of where you put the decimal point, so you can have a small number with a high degree of precision, or you can have a big number with basically no precision. This causes problems when you're trying to walk around in the millions, because the position of everything from the player to the vertices of the meshes is only approximately correct. It ends up looking something like this- Oh f It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. Maths bullsh**. Of course, this isn't an issue for most games. If you treat one game unit as a meter, which is quite common, you'd have to walk over 600 miles to start seeing floating point problems. But we want infinite. infinite. And as discussed before, infinity is bigger than 600. Treadmilly. Tread 
Which brings us to our last solution, which is a lot like the previous solution. Basically, we spawn the world in, as before, but when the player tries to move forward, we move the world backwards. It's kind of like if you've ever fallen asleep in a car, hopefully not while driving, and woken up just as a wagon is overtaking you and you have that moment of abject terror wondering if your missus has started reversing down the f***ing motorway. What I'm saying is, everything is relative. If your only frame of reference is approaching you, it's impossible to tell if you're moving towards it or it's moving towards you. Ultimately, no game developer is ever going to need truly infinite game worlds because no player could ever explore an infinitely large world. Because as mentioned, infinity goes on forever. But that doesn't make these tricks useless though. You can use them to make your game seem bigger than it really is, or save on storage space by generating world rather than storing it. Or you could just make a big f off world and challenge the player to go and try and find the end of it. You can have that one for free, Peter Molyneux. Now, I should point out that I am by no means an expert, but I have been messing with game engines for the past six or so years, so you can safely assume that I am at least six years old. But there will be people watching this who know other tricks, and to those people, I say keep that shit to yourself. Drop those ideas in the comments, along with anything else you want to say. But be nice, I'm a sensitive boy. And also, thank you to my amazing supporters, whether you're a Patreon, a Twitch sub, a Discord booster, or just here liking and commenting the videos. And if you're none of those things, this is for you. Enjoy. Like and subscribe. 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 Is it all for?